Hey, welcome back to the Code Wolf. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Azureite, which is a great local emulator for your Azure storage accounts. This can be a great tool or option if you're working with blobs or queues, but maybe you don't have permissions to create those services in Azure, or you're trying to avoid unwanted costs or just simplify your local development workflow. Please hit subscribe to support the channel, and let's get started and see how this works. All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna be using Visual Studio since that's a really simple flow to get started. And if there's a lot of interest in this video, I'm more than happy to show how to do this without Visual Studio using other tools and kind of running the emulator on its own. But for now, let's see how quick we can get started just kind of using this default workflow. So inside Visual Studio, I have this really simple Blazor server-side rendering app. And this is just an out-of-the-box template for the most part. But inside of our home page, I've added some really basic code to retrieve all of the blobs inside of a blob container. So you can see down here in our on initialized method, we're going out and getting a blob container client that matches to the images container. And once we have that, we can get our blobs and then we loop through those just to display their name. Really simple stuff here. We inject our blob service client at the top. Um, I'm not going to go too much further into how to work with Azure Storage programmatically. That could be a different video. But with a simple setup like this, we can test our local storage. Now, if I wanted this to work using a traditional flow, I'd have to go out to Azure and create a storage account and set up permissions or get the connection string and configure all that in my app. But with local storage, I can actually get all of this working without ever even going out to the internet. I can do everything locally right here on my computer. So to get started with this, the first thing you want to do is go up to this connected services node in Visual Studio, and this lets us manage a lot of services and dependencies for our app. So I'm going to double click on that. And from here, we can see some things that are currently connected to our app. I'm just going to ignore all of this for right now and choose this green plus button. And if we expand our window a bit here, we can see there's actually a built-in option for the Azureite local emulator. So you can either choose to run this in a container or just using a node.js based option. I'm going to choose the node one for now and let's hit next. And then we just have to give this a connection string name. So I'll call this local storage. And by default, the value of that connection string will just be use development storage equals true. And that will tell Visual Studio and our app to connect to the emulator. Some of these configurations are just here by default and set up to work out of the box but most of this stuff you can further customize on your own if you want to do something different. For now, I'm also gonna save that connection string into the local user secrets file, which is pretty standard for .NET development, but you can also use one of these other options if you're comfortable. And I'm gonna hit next. And now it's gonna give us three important project updates. And these are the three things that we need to get this working and it does all of them for us. So first, it's gonna add a few lines of code to our app that we'll look at in a minute and it's gonna install a couple NuGet packages, and it's gonna add a secret for that connection string. So those are the three things that were updated. Now let's see what those actually look like in our project instead of just reading this summary. So I'll click finish, and you can see our local emulator pops into our service dependencies. But now let's look over in our solution explorer to see what really happened here. So to start with, a few NuGet packages were added by default. Um, I didn't actually install these. These were handled by Visual Studio and Azureite. So you can see we've got our Azure storage blobs, file shares, queues, and some other core components here. So these were all added for us, which is nice. Let's set that up. And then if we go into our program.cs file, what's really interesting is that it also added some code for us. So if I zoom out a little bit here, you can see this line here, this was actually added by our tooling. So I never added this to the project, this was put in by default. So you can see it's adding a service client for blob storage and for queues in our Azure storage account. And it's referencing that local storage connection string we set up for Azureite. So this is gonna go out and get these values from our user secrets. And it's just gonna add a properly configured client into our dependency injection container. And these lines of code are what will enable us to just inject that blob service client here. So this is all set up for us now, thanks to this tooling. So the last piece of this is our secrets.json, and this is where that connection string is actually stored. So if we go to manage user secrets, you can see that's the name that we picked for our connection string, and that's the value. So our app is just gonna read these out of our user secrets and wire up our service client, and everything just kind of works. 
Now in the background, Visual Studio has also started up that local Azureite service for us. And the easiest way to browse and use that service is actually using the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. So this is a nice app that you can download onto your local machine. And I recommend installing this if you're gonna be doing a lot of work with Azure Storage. It basically gives you kind of that browser portal view right here on your local computer and you can connect the local emulator or services out in the cloud and you can actually do a lot with this tool. I really like it. And to install this, if you just Google Azure Storage Explorer download or something like that, you'll, it'll be one of the first results and you can just install this. Now for me, the emulator showed up by default, so it just sort of auto discovered it and connected to it. If you don't see it, you can always say on your storage accounts, right click, connect to Azure Storage. And then down here, there's a local storage emulator and it will fill in all of those defaults that it started the service up with automatically. So you can go through it and add it that way. But in most cases, it should just show up for you right here. So now you can see we have blob containers, queues, tables. This is similar to the experience that we'd get if we were working directly in Azure. So let's say that we want to upload a few images and display those in our app using that homepage code that we already looked at. We can say, create a container here, and I'll call this images. And now let's upload some files. So this is similar to the portal experience again. So I'll open this and hit upload. And it's going to successfully transfer those from our local files explorer into the emulator. So now we have our three images and everything is fine here in our storage explorer. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. And so in our home page, now it should retrieve those three images using this code and display them in our home page. So let's run the app and see what this gives us. And so when that starts up, sure enough, there's our picture one, two, and three. Those are the same names that we have in our Explorer here. So it's really that simple. You could now also start programmatically uploading files and working with metadata and all the different properties. This is a full development experience and it's all happening locally. You don't have to do everything with a live service out in Azure. Now, a couple other notes. Again, Azureite can actually be customized in a lot of different ways. I'm not really gonna get into that in this video right now. This is just kind of a quick start. But if you're interested in that or seeing how this works in other workflows, I'd be happy to make another video. I also want to mention if you click on this emulator node here, you can see kind of what the basic uh, default connection setups are here. So the account name for the storage account is dev store account one by default. And these are the kind of things that you can customize when you start up the emulator and you can add other storage accounts as well and it will give you the endpoints for these as well. So by default, the tool runs on this address and you can see there's the keys and the connection strings and all that. This stuff is configurable, but these are the nice defaults that just kind of work automatically through Visual Studio. And personally, I don't usually see a need to change these, so I think this flow will work for most people, but have fun experimenting with those. And Azureite can be a really powerful tool in your toolbox, so enjoy. Thanks for watching. Again, please hit subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you next time.